Hello everyone and welcome to scardia.com. Today's lecture is on physiology with the topic of pituitary hormones and hypothalamus. So let's get on with it. So what is the pituitary gland? Now pituitary gland is also sometimes called the master gland because it is the gland that controls mostly all of the bodily functions in our body either directly or indirectly. Now pituitary gland is found in the brain and it is found at the floor of the brain usually under the optic nerve and the point where the both optic nerves cross each other known as the optic chiasma and it is also found at the site at the bony site of the sphenoid bone uh, known as the cella tertia so if i have to see in the brain this is the area where you will find the pituitary gland and this little yellow area is the area of this set gland now if we were to enlarge this area we'll see that pituitary gland is shaped um, like a pouch now this pouch has many um, components and each component has a specific function to it now uh, as for the main part it is composed of two main lobes now I say mean because sometimes we also incl include a median lobe between those. But the main lobes are the anterior lobe and the accompanying posterior lobe. Then this posterior lobe and both of these are arranged and named according to their name. The anterior lobe is anterior to the posterior neuronal lobe. Next we have the stalk. Now this stalk also knows, uh, known as the infundulum is the one that connects both of these lobes of the pituitary gland to the hypothalamus. This is the hypothalamic area. Next we have the pars tuberalis. Now pars tuberalis is an area or you can say an encroaching part or of the anterior anterior lobe which uh, covers the stalk or the infundibulum area now this has um, no physiological meaning to it but anatomically speaking the anterior lobe uh, encroaches upwards towards the stalk and the hypothalamus now why this happens is all related to the vascularity of the pituitary gland which we will learn in the upcoming slides. Next is the median eminence and this median eminence is again of the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus has many parts but the part that is connected to the pituitary gland or sometimes even uh, is uh, projection of it is known as the median eminence next we have the optic chiasm now the optic chiasm is the area where the both optic nerves cross each other and it is important because pituitary gland is found right beneath the optic chiasm so any tumor or outgrowth or any kind of area that might put pressure on pituitary gland usually arises from the optic nerve and the optic chiasma. Next we have the hypothalamus. Now this is the whole of the hypothalamus with its median eminence. Now let's talk about the characteristics of the pituitary gland. As for the characteristics We'll start with the nomenclature. Now, pituitary gland is also known as the hypophysis. Uh, it is called hypophysis because it is found beneath the hypothalamus. So the gland which is found beneath the hypothalamus is known as the hypophysis. It is also known as the master gland, like I said earlier, 
because it controls directly or indirectly almost all of the bodily functions including both the metabolism and growth. Next we have the shape and size. As for the shape, it is shaped like a pouch with the stalk arising superiorly towards the hypothalamus. As for the size, it has a maximum diameter of about 1 cm. Next we have the weight. Um, as for the weight, it is a relatively small gland with a weight of around only 2 grams. Next we'll talk about the site. Now the site of pituitary gland is of utmost importance. Uh, it is important first of all because it is found on a very specific area known as a tela tertiaca. Now this cellar tertiaca is a depression which is found at the sphenoid bone. And this depression has both the covering and the downward outpouching of the dura mater, which then in turn forms the cellar diaphragm. Now we will see all of these structures in the upcoming uh, slides, but it has to be noted that because of its site, that it is found at the floor of the brain, uh, any kind of um, outgrowth either in the optic nerve or at the floor of the brain might put pressure on the pituitary gland resulting in the dysfunction of this gland. Next we have the hypothalamus. Now pituitary gland does not function alone. Now it has its own regulation where it regulates itself uh, but there are other factors which contributes to its regulation. The primary factor is hypothalamus. Either hypothalamus regulates the pituitary gland through releasing certain releasing or inhibiting factors or it directly synthesizes and releases the pituitary hormones.